Hi there, welcome back to the breadboard. This is part two of three parts looking at integrating OPC UA into the PLC Next starter kit, uh, specifically the 2152 controller. In the first part, we looked at setting up the controller, uh, setting up its environment, and getting it ready for configuring the variables and I.O. In this part of the video, we are going to continue, configure all the I.O. points, and get the PLC Next 2152 up and running. In the third video, we will look at configuring a client based on Node-RED on a Raspberry Pi Model 3B+. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is create um, two analog inputs, two analog outputs, and maybe four digital inputs and four digital outputs so that we can use them with OPC UA. If you look here in the OPC, sorry, in the variable PLC, if you click on this little right arrow, it will open up and you can see right here is the OPC. Remember before I said if you don't have all clicked, you can individually select them and this is where once you've set up your variables, you could select them. Now just to clarify, analog inputs and outputs are word based and digital are booleans, uh, bits. So I'm just going to go through and create these. As soon as I've got them all created, I will uh, continue the video. Now, one of the things worth mentioning here, just to save time, as you're creating these variables, so you can see I've already created the first one, PLC analog in one. I'm just creating analog in two, and I haven't changed the types or anything yet. I'm just going to put in the names first, and then I'll go back and change all of the types to match what their specific I.O. would be. So you also don't need to type in all of this stuff in front. You just need to put in the variable name, so analog underscore in two is what I'm just calling that one and I'll just click away and then I'll do analog underscore out one and then same analog underscore out two and basically the same for the digitals so okay so I've created two analog inputs, two analog outputs, two digital in and two digital out. They're all boolean right now. So we just go in here and we're going to change them to what we need. So we use word for the analogs and the digitals are all boolean, of course. So we'll leave those. Um, we don't need to set OPC on or off because we've got the configuration set to all, which means it's going to pick these up anyway. And the next thing, so these are the variables for the PLC. That's effectively for internal. For the process datums, we can now pick the matching physical I.O. that we want for these. So this is a word and it's an analog input. It already, already knows that it's a, a word in this selection. So it's not giving me the bit-based digital inputs or outputs. This DIO 1 through 8 is actually all of the I.O. lines in a group. So it is a special read for the digital lines. Um, analog lines also have a word, uh, sorry, a, effectively a double word 32-bit mode, which is this one here, which can bring two, I think, two analog uh, ports at a time as well. So what we actually want is the in one, which is this one here, and then the next one would be in two, and we've got the outs for the analog now. So analog out one, analog out two. Now we're into the digital ones. You can see how easy this is just to configure these. So these should only show up Booleans now. So here are all of our digital inputs one through, sorry, zero through seven and outs zero through seven, as well as um, the special ones aren't on there. Sorry, I was about to say as well as those, but it's not. So we're just gonna pick in zero, in one and we're going to pick out zero and out one and that is pretty much everything that we need to configure so the next thing we should be able to do i think is just compile and upload this to the plc the 2152 and it should work we should be able to then um, once we configure our node red on the raspberry pi communicate with the 2152 using obviously uh, secure channel with credentials to control these digital inputs and outputs and analog inputs and outputs. 
Okay, so let's upload this to the 2152 and see if it'll work. So we just right click and write and start project. So it will actually start running it once it gets there. It should prompt us for, oh no, I already put the password in because we're already connected. So it should just upload it. And I think it will go into, now that I'm uploading a program, uh, this program, it should go into debug automatically as well. Okay, no, there we go. So the debug, when it's running, you can see here it's actually pulling up um, the two analog inputs, the two analog outputs, the two digital inputs, and the two digital outputs. Now, according to this, then the digital inputs are on and the digital outputs are off. We have a reading for the analog in two and analog in one. So one of them is connected to the temperature sensor and one of them is connected to the potentiometer. These are 16-bit converters, digital out and digital in. So uh, signed 16-bit. So let's input the hex value. And you can see here that the decimal value is 18387. Now, if we go to um, divide that by 3000, that should then give us the volts because that's the conversion. That's what they use for conversion. Um, so let's just divide that by 3000. And it should tell us that we have about six, well, exactly six there, um, set on the potentiometer. If we take the temperature input, so 1ED8, we're sitting at about 24, 25 degrees. So if we put that in, go back to hex, and you can see that that is 7896, and if we divide that by 30,000, 3,000, oh, <laughs> it's rounding up because it's in programmer mode. So there you go, 26, that would be 26.32. Um, Cause this is the volts and the temperature is obviously reading slightly there, it's, it's reading 26. So let me just go and have a look and I'll also, while I'm there, I'll flip um, these two switches off and just see if they change. And I'll also set the potentiometer to about five instead of six and um, yeah, that one's just doing its thing. So let me just go and do that and we'll see if these change. Okay, I've turned the two switches off and as you can see, they have gone off here. They're both saying now false. So because they're a, you're driving into them, they've now gone to a zero level, which is false. The analog inputs have also, I set one to about five. So that's the 3D, it's just flickering 9C, 9E. That equates to 15763 decimal. So if we divide that by the 3000, it will tell us the volts. So there we go. It's just a hand dial on a potentiometer that's pretty close to five. So that has now reflected the correct value. The temperature is currently sitting at about 26.6-ish in there. So if I take that and see what it's currently reading, it's warmed up a little bit in there. So perfect. The analog values are also reading correctly and with the digital ones as well. That's good. Now the DMM is currently showing zero volts on the panel meter. So I'm just going to put that up in the corner of the screen so you can see it. I'm going to just by hand, uh, I think it's on analog out one. I think I put it on. And so if I put in here the 50% value, which is and do the same thing. 3A98, enter. And now we should have five volts. So 4.99, 4.98, close enough. Um, okay, so we know we have the IO working. We know that we can control it remotely using 
OPC works, the next thing to do, um, theoretically, OPC UA is already up and running. There's nothing we have to do because, as I showed you in the configuration, it is set for all output port visibility and input port visibility. So we'll bring up node red on my Raspberry Pi and I've already configured some of the workflows in there. Um, I haven't configured the digital ones yet, but the analog uh, input for the temperature is already set and the analog output. But anyway, I'll show you the flows anyway. So let's go over there and have a look.